This podcast deals with chemical equilibrium. Now chemical equilibrium is a situation in which you have reversible reactions going on. A reversible reaction is a chemical reaction in which the products can react to reform the reactants. So instead of the reaction going totally towards the right, totally towards the products like previous reactions, we're now looking at reactions that are able to reverse themselves. In a chemical equilibrium, the rate of the forward reaction, that is how fast it happens, is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And at that point then you'd get no change in the concentration of any of the reactants or any of the products. Now one note here, the amount of reactants and the amount of products are not necessarily equal to each other. So chemical equilibrium is when the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And many times that's written with um, either a double-headed arrow or two arrows, one above the other one, pointing in the opposite direction. So this particular reaction would be an equilibrium reaction where you have mercury oxide going to mercury and oxygen. And again, the arrows there indicate that the reaction can go either way um, and that it is at equilibrium, so the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. So if we take a look at a particular situation, this is NO2 gas producing uh, NO gas and oxygen. Notice there is a double-headed arrow there, so that means you're in an equilibrium state. Notice in our graph, concentration is the y-axis, time is the x-axis. Notice that we start out with NO2, fairly high concentration. We start out with no NO and no oxygen. And then slowly, the NO and the O2 begin to form as the NO2 begins to decompose. But notice the flatlining. Once you reach a flatline concentration, that means the reactants and products are still changing back and forth, but for every two NO2s that decompose, you get two NOs and an oxygen coming back in the, uh, in the opposite direction. So you basically have no net change in the concentration. This would be the point at which this reaction is at equilibrium. Most uh, reactions in the body are equilibrium reactions. So this idea applies directly to biological systems. There is a principle, it's called the Chatelier's principle, that applies to equilibrium reactions. And that principle says, when a system's at equilibrium, the system will undergo a change to relieve a stress. So in other words, if you do something to an equilibrium system, the equilibrium system itself will try to restore equilibrium. And we're going to actually take a look at very specific examples. So let's take a look at example number one. In a closed container of ice and water at equilibrium, suddenly there is a temperature change. That is, the temperature increases. So you suddenly get an increase in temperature. Now here's the basic reaction. When you take ice and you add energy to it, of course you produce liquid water. And this system um, is at equilibrium. If we were to suddenly raise the temperature, that is, shove in a bunch more energy, of course you're going to have more energy then for the ice to melt, so the reaction is temporarily going to shift to the right. So in other words, the um, rate of the reaction to the right is going to increase temporarily. Now eventually, the system will reach equilibrium once you know, some of that energy is used up, but there will be a temporary shift to the right. So this is a change in energy. Example number two, a closed container of dinitrogen tetroxide and NO2 is at equilibrium. So we have an equilibrium reaction, N2O4 uh, plus some energy produces 2NO2. Now, suddenly, NO2 is injected into this system, so you have a lot of NO2. So that means you have a lot of the substance on the right in this reaction. So you're suddenly going to get a shift to the left, again, temporarily, but you will get a temporary shift to the left in order to use up that NO2. So you have all this NO2 available, so the rate of the reverse reaction is going to increase, and you will get a shift to the left. Now, example number three. You have a closed container of water and its vapor, and it's at equilibrium. 
So you have this reaction going on. Water plus energy uh, in equilibrium produces water vapor, which is the gaseous form of water. Now, you then remove vapor from the system. So the vapor that you see there on the right side, we're taking the vapor out. Because you're removing the vapor, you don't have as much vapor to react in the reverse reaction. So now the forward reaction actually is happening at a greater rate. So water plus energy happens, producing more vapor. So we say that the system temporarily shifts to the right. But again, at some point then, equilibrium would then be restored. Okay, so we've taken a look at adding substances, taking substances away, changing the temperature. The last change that we really need to look at is a pressure change. So let's take a look at example number three. So again, we have this closed container of dinitrogen tetroxide and nitrogen dioxide, and the system is at equilibrium we then come along and increase the pressure. Now, when you increase the pressure on this system, you are really decreasing the volume. So you're making the volume smaller. When you make the volume so smaller, then you are going to actually get a shift to the left. So it shifts to the side with the fewer number of moles of gas. And this always happens when there's an increase in pressure, meaning a decrease in volume. You're going to get a shift in the direction producing the least number of moles. And you literally look at the coefficients there. So two moles of NO2 on the right, one mole of N2O4 on the left. So you're gonna get a shift to the left there. Now, if instead we decreased the pressure, which means we increase the volume, you then get a shift towards the direction producing the greatest number of moles. Okay, so in this example on the screen, the pressure is increased, so volume decreases, so we get a shift in the direction of the least number of moles. So this is a, a fourth example of Le Chatelier's principle at work.